guys and welcome to Vegan Beauty Girl. My name is Nicole and today we are continuing the vegan foundation series. So every day this week I've been reviewing a different vegan and cruelty free foundation for you guys. Today we are looking at a mineral powder foundation from a brand called Beauty Without Cruelty. So this foundation is very different to the rest that I have been trying this week. I haven't tried a loose powder but I did have one of these lying around. I'm not really often drawn to loose powders. I did go through a phase a few years back. But I don't know what it is about them. I just prefer a liquid foundation. I think I'm just a bit more comfortable applying those. So I do think my review here is going to be a little bit biased because of that. I would also like to say that yes, I have applied fake tan since we last spoke. I am recording it. I'm doing a U-tan review. So that'll be up soon. So yeah, the shade that I am today is different to the rest of the week. So if you've been shade matching alongside me, I think that's really important for you guys to know. So it has actually been a while since I last used powder foundation. So this is a little bit intimidating for me. First off, I would just love to say how much I love that there is a guard. So you are able to like twist this close so that you don't get too much excess powder. Just tip some powder out into the lid, putting some on my brush, trying to tap away any excess. And then I'm just gonna tap it into my skin. To be fair, I actually really like the coverage on this. I think the shade might be a little bit too warm for me. So I actually did just fake tan yesterday. So the shade that I'm wearing today will not be equal to the shades I've worn for the rest of this week before I fake tan. So this one is a bit browner than what I'm used to. I'm going to use a foundation brush, tap that into the product and use that on my spots and also on my under eyes. But yeah, I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and we'll catch up. But yeah, let's talk about Beauty Without Cruelty. They're a lot lesser known than the other brands I've covered this week as well. But they're reasonably well known in the vegan space, particularly if you've been vegan for a long time. I think I've been vegan for 12, 12 and a half years now and back in the day it was not like the marketing buzzword it is now and there are very few brands that were offering vegan beauty products and that often was like their whole purpose so Beauty Without Cruelty was a brand like that they were founded in the 60s and they have animal rights right deep in their roots so when you are buying from them you are supporting a company that really does care about vegan ethics and have cared long before it was particularly profitable to do so and I personally much prefer to support a brand I know has really deep rooted ethics than ones which are like accidentally vegan. I was actually gifted this by a wonderful company called Greener Beauty. They are a vegan, green, ethical beauty shop online. So I'll leave a link down below for them because they are incredible. They also have a vegan salon search as well, which I'll link down below because that's super helpful. It helps you find salon services like haircuts, massages, etc., which are vegan friendly. But anyway, back to the foundation. So this foundation costs £10. Unfortunately, it's not a foundation I ever got into using regularly, mostly because I just don't enjoy powder foundation that much. I'm not 100% certain the shade is particularly right for me either, especially the more I'm looking on camera. I feel like it is just a little bit too dark and pink for me. I have the shade Gazelle, which is a warm pinky beige. If you do go online, it is easy to see like the sort of undertones that they've got in each of their foundations. But I just think Gazelle was maybe a bit too dark for me. They have 12 shades, which really isn't enough and it could be a bit more diverse, which is frustrating. Um, but I've said this before about Greener Beauty brands, they often don't have enough shades. And that is one reason that I struggle to shop with them. Uh, when, especially as an influencer, when I recommend a foundation, I want to be able to recommend it to all of my followers, not just people in the narrower shade ranges. They are better than some in the sense that they at least do help you shop by undertones through their descriptions. So I'll leave you um, like the descriptions of their 12 shades in the comments so that you can figure out which one you might be. So on top of being a vegan and cruelty free brand, they're also very green. And you'll find that this powder is talc free, alcohol free and hydrous. They're a British brand. The product is gluten free. It is a loose powder. It is nut free. It is palm oil free and it is soy free. So lots of free froms there. So if you are someone who's very sensitive, this might be a product you'd be interested in trying. Right now for me, freshly applied, it does feel a little bit um, dry on my skin. And again, it's just quite frustrating that I don't think I'm the right shade. It's particularly on camera here. I feel like it looks like I've put blush on my forehead when I haven't. And I'm just wondering if maybe I've got it on a bit more thick up there. But I'm interested to see how it wears throughout the day. 
morning. I do have oily skin and powder foundations are meant to be quite good for oily skin. I have put foundation on my nose, which I don't often do, as you guys will have heard this week. But I thought I'd give it a go with a powder one because I remember that being a reason I used to actually quite like powder foundation. I found that it was one of the best for not really getting too into my nose pores and making my nose look like awful. It's one of my big nose struggles. All in all, I think the coverage is quite nice. I think it looks a little bit patchy from where I've not got the exact right shade on which you wouldn't really notice if I was wearing the right shade. But the coverage on it is actually a lot better than I expected. It didn't take much to kind of even out my skin tone a bit. My skin looks actually really lovely. It's really minimized my spots. It hasn't made them disappear, but it's really evened out my skin tone. It's not gathered around any dry patches that I've noticed, but my skin isn't as dry as it's been throughout the rest of the reviews I've done, so there isn't much for it to cling to. But yeah, I will catch up with you guys again shortly and let you know how I'm getting on with it throughout the day. Hey guys, so a few hours have passed and I always think it's quite helpful showing you guys what the foundation looks like on my phone camera rather than on my like videoing camera. I always find that everything looks a little bit different. I'm getting a bit of shine through. Can we see that? I'd say it actually looks a lot more even on here than what I thought it was looking like. The coverage is still really rather nice around my spots. I'm going to be quite honest, I've been napping. I must say earlier, I did really enjoy the coverage around my under eyes. Instead of using a concealer, I just got a concealer brush and pressed in the product using it like that. And I've actually really enjoyed the results. I would say though, it doesn't feel super lightweight on the skin. I can kind of still feel that I have powder on. To be honest, for a powder foundation, if you're looking for an ethical option for a powder foundation, this is actually quite nice. It's a shame I don't still have kind of like dry skin because that would have been really interesting to have seen. I did struggle a little bit to get an even application. I don't know if I think that is because it's not an exact shade match and I'm not that familiar with using a powder foundation. I don't think that is anything wrong with the product. I think that's something wrong with me. So <laughs> and that's my feedback there. I'd be really interested to know if anyone else has used this foundation. And do let me know down below if you've used it. As far as like feeling up my skin goes, it's not awful. It's kind of like when I stop and think about it, yeah, I can feel it but i'm not thinking like god my skin feels groggy i'm like actively trying to think can i feel it for this review and i'm like well yeah yes i can but getting in close there's no like build up around like my smile or my frown lines which has been nice i think i'd wear it again so final feedback on my powder beauty of alcohol to foundation is that i actually am very impressed with the coverage i think it is a lot more even than i thought it was early oh god i my dinner badge let's cover that back up i think i would consider wearing it again just all in all i'm quite happy it's not brilliant around my spots especially this late on the day but i have broken out lately i ran out of my favorite cream which is the serenity cream from s5 skincare i've just been kind of like using what i've got around the house and my skin's not happy with me but until i get my new one through in the post i've got to just moisturize what i can i'll leave a link below for the moisturizer i love to be honest i think the shine control is really good i think it's similar to the matte foundation that i had from mua where it just has a bit of a dewier look now rather than an oily look i think normally one of my concerns about using a powered foundation is that i worry it'll look cakey but it doesn't look cakey at all so if you are looking for a free from mineral foundation and to support a nice small business then i would recommend checking out beauty without cruelty so thank you guys so much for watching and tune in again tomorrow where we'll be doing our final foundation review for the week don't forget to like and subscribe I talk a lot about vegan beauty over on this channel, so if that's something you're interested in, we should hang out again. Until next time, bye!